Hey, what's up guys? This is Andrew Smursek with Combat Art Training. Today we're going to be talking about the HS515CM. That is the Milspec Solar Power uh, Red Dot with the Quick Release Mount from Hollow Sun. Uh, there's also the HS515GM and that one is basically the same thing um, but it doesn't have the solar power and you don't need um, the special tool to take out the battery. Uh, and honestly, if you were to get that one, you'd be fine. Um, normally these run about 350 and the GM, the one that's battery only is about 300, but I got a deal on this uh, for 300 bucks. So I'll put a link to that in the description uh, if you wanna go ahead and get that yourself. Now, um, there's a lot of great red dots out there. Uh, personally, I think like Aimpoint is the top of the line. I think that's what you should get for your fighting rifles. Uh, and if you weren't to get an Aimpoint, I think either this one or the GM, uh, one of the mil spec ones with the quick release mount would be the one to get. <coughs> uh, if you weren't to get an Aimpoint, uh, personally. Now, why the um, quick release mount is important is uh, you know if your if your optic goes down, runs out of battery, breaks, whatever, you want to be able to quickly take that off your gun, and then just be able to switch to your iron sense after that. I have the um, HS four hundred three B from Hollow Sun, which is it's like a hundred and forty dollar red dot, and I have that on uh, this rental gun right here, and it's been good. The only thing is that mount is starting to get a little play in it so i'm gonna remount that re-zero it and get that going good again and i might um try to find a uh, quick release mount to put on the bottom of it even if it makes it sit up a little bit taller um that being said uh very important when you do use the quick release uh you want to have it so that putting it on the rail it is snug but not like you have to force it close, okay? Read the directions on that before you do it. And when you take your Torx wrench, which I fucking lost, although I got another one in the pistol grip of that AR. That's, that is important, actually. Uh, the battery tool and your Torx wrench, keep those in the pistol grip or just have them somewhere where they're handy so it's not like you got the range or taking a class, your optic goes down, goes loose or something, and you would have to drive home to get the tool, okay? Um, but anyways, when you're adjusting that screw and read the directions on this, okay, think about like uh, one eighth turns and then try it again. One eighth turn, try it again. Because it, once it gets to that point where it is tight, a little bit of a turn goes a real long way and um, you can over tighten it very quickly. <clears throat> now, um, okay, also uh, there's a spacer that comes with it, right? So you see that this one, it looks different than what you'll see on the picture. And that's just because the spacer would normally go between the quick release mount and the optic. Very easy to, to take off. Literally just unscrew these screws and then you'll have this against the optic and unscrew the ones on the, on the riser. So the quick release mount will come off, unscrew the ones from the, uh, the riser and the optic then that piece will be out of the way. Uh, now, after that, make sure you degrease the threads on the screws. Um, personally, I just use brake cleaner. Uh, I don't know, is there a better option? I really wanna know if there's something better I should be using, but that's what I've been doing and it seems to work. And then blue 242 uh, Loctite thread locker uh, on the screws. Just a little drop, that's all you need. Don't over tighten them. Do a star pattern when you tighten these back up. Now, um, going into the optics, so it's the mil spec one, it's made from, um, you know, mil spec materials, as in it has 70, 75 T6 hard anodized aluminum, so the metal is strong, all right. Um, there is a night vision mode, uh, two adjustments for night vision mode, and then 10 uh, where it's daylight and the dot is visible. Um, then it has a 20 millimeter window. Um, and as far as uh, how it's powered, again, you have the battery and you have solar power. <coughs> um, 
you don't have to have it running on the solar power and if you put the battery in wrong it won't turn on okay the picture in the manual is a little confusing but if you look at your battery it has a plus sign uh, on it and the, the picture looks different so just pay attention to what I'm saying right like read what it says and look at the battery okay the plus side which is this side goes down okay so and it also comes with an extra tray which is awesome but you put that in the tray with the plus side down and then the side with all those dots that goes up okay if you put it in the other way the optic won't turn on even with the solar power at least I wasn't able to get it to um, <clears throat> Now, let's talk about the reticle, and then we'll talk about the adjustments. So, the reticle, there's two different reticles that you can use, um, and that is the two MOA dot in the center with a 65 MOA ring around it. That should look familiar. That's what uh, EOTEX look like, and Hullison's been using them for a while. Um, you can also switch it so it's just a two MOA dot, okay? MOA means it's a, not exact, but it's about one MOA, one inch, all right? Um, now, one thing that is cool about that reticle, and I want to do more videos on range estimation in the future, but not so much right now, but we'll just briefly hit it. One thing that's cool about that reticle is if you think 65 MOA, right? That's about, uh, well, that's five, uh, MOA is about, 65 MOA is about five foot five inches. So if you think about a six foot tall guy, uh, that would be 72 inches, his feet, his head would stick up a little bit more uh, above the radical at 100 yards. Now this is if you suck at range estimation. Once you get better at it, you'll be able to pick out um, 100 yards, 150, uh, 175, all the way out to 300 and then soon you'll be able to do it beyond there just by looking at it okay once you get good at it but until you are good at it, you can use a rack like this so six foot tall dude uh, will be a little bit taller than the circle right 72 inches against a 65 inch circle at 100 yards then we go to um, 200 yards that's where the bottom uh, of the rack the bottom half from the dot down to the bottom of the circle that now represents 65 inches so a dude uh, who is six foot tall 72 inches tall feet will stick out the bottom head will come up above the dot a little bit you can also think about like if if you're look, putting it up against a doorway imagine a person in that doorway right so you see like that square around them imagine that's a doorway okay then going out further 300 yards um, the total circle will be 260 inches and then the bottom half of the circle would be 130 inches 130 inches is equal to 10 foot 10 inches okay so for that like my garage right here it's eight feet from the floor to the ceiling okay you can look up average heights of houses or go measure your house and you know um, don't be a weirdo and measure your neighbor's houses okay but uh, you can kind of get the average height of a house so you could think if you were going um, to look at, you know, how far away is that house? 300 yards, it probably, the dot would probably be a little bit above the, um, uh, where the roof is, uh, from the ground. So, um, that's just a simple thing on what you can use that radical for. Um, personally though, uh, I don't need the radical to range up to 300, okay? Um, and when I am shooting at a greater distance, I like just having the dot because I find that ring around it distracts my eye, okay? Up close, yeah, maybe that ring is a good thing, but it's not really necessary, okay? Um, and again, I, I believe you get the longer battery life by having just the dot, so um, that's just how I'm gonna run it. If you were to be like, this is my home defense gun, I'm gonna leave the ring on, go for it. Now, how you change, the reticle is you want to hold down the minus symbol okay and then you'll, you'll see the reticle change um, <clears throat> now uh, adjustments pretty cool thing here too is you just unscrew the cap
Oh man, those take forever. Come on now. All right, and then you got that little, the little knob at the top, and that lines up inside there. And then you use the cap to adjust it. And the clicks are 0.5 MOA, so about a half inch at 100 yards, which would mean one click at 200 yards would be uh, a full inch per click. Okay. Um, that being said, too, I pretty much count the clicks and I just move it until I have what I'm hitting at. I don't sit there and do math on it um, when I zero because you can't guarantee that the clicks will be perfect unless you're spending like a lot of money on a, on your optic. Um, and even with some optics, what you'll find is like the clicks will be true going right, but when you go left, it goes further each click, okay? So, uh, or up and down, same thing, where it's like they may go further this way or that way compared to the other side, it goes where it's supposed to. Um, <laughs> I don't I don't count the clicks, and, or I don't do the math, I just kind of count the clicks and and then I get where I need, to, I need it to be. <clears throat> Otherwise, you'll be real annoyed when it doesn't, the math doesn't add up. All right, now, <clears throat> turning it off, hold the plus and minus sign. Uh, now you have manual mode and you have solar power mode, okay? So, one thing I found um, annoying about the solar power mode is a thing by if you're in your house um, and it's running off just the solar power. Uh, what can happen is the reticle will adjust uh, brightness um, as you move into different lane conditions. So if it was, you know, real bright outside and real dark inside, your reticle is going to be dark because that's the amount of light it's receiving. Okay, and then when you put it at that bright outside, your reticle will wash out because it's not bright enough to actually see it. So I prefer just manual mode, but solar power mode would be cool if uh, you know the world ended and we couldn't get batteries anymore um but that being said you know fifty thousand hour battery life just change the just change the battery on your birthday you'll be fine um there is a motion sensor it's a shake awake feature you always hear about now with a fifty thousand hour battery life i don't really care about it but it's there so that's cool so your optic will shut off after a certain amount of time you can adjust that uh, just go to page 13 in the user manual, um, and I would pull it up online because, like, at least if you're blind like me, you can't see that shit. But page 13 tells you how to do that and tells you the amount of times and all that. Um, and then when the battery goes, um, when the when the battery is low, the reticle will start blinking. Um, how to zero it is on page 14. But if you're trying to figure that out, just take off the cap, okay? that you use to adjust the zero. And when you look in there, it has an arrow. It says up and right in that direction. When you rotate it that direction, that is moving the bullets, okay? Where the round is impacting. So if you are shooting and the round is off to the left, look at the arrow, right? And you wanna move it to the right, move it with the arrow to the right. Very simple. Um, one last thing on this is it has the kill flash, which would be that honeycomb in the front. I don't know if you can see that that well, but basically what that's supposed to do is that's supposed to make it so that your optic doesn't glare and give away your position. Um, it's a common thing, um, you know, in the military that we had big long honeycombs on our ACOGs in the Marine Corps. Um, and you'll see, you know, look at uh, pictures of snipers and they do different stuff to, to make it so that their lens won't glare towards the enemy also. Um, I would say that if you have the lens covers up, it's probably gonna glare a little bit more. So if you wanna get the most out of not having glare, you gotta pop that lens cover down. Um, now that, and that, that's a cool feature on these too, is these lens covers that they actually look good, like all the ones I've ever seen in the stores that are cheap that you buy there, they're shit. But these ones are actually pretty good. And the thing I like about them is I'm gonna leave them up as much as I can, but if my gun got dragged through the mud or something like that, I can pop them down and then all that mud is out of the way, okay?
okay? So I actually really like that feature, um, especially since they are clear. So if you get debris or whatever on it, you can just pop those down uh, and you're good to go. Uh, okay, so um, last thing I'm mounting this on the AK. I've already adjusted um, everything I need to uh, as far as the quick release goes to get right at the correct spot, um, right at the right amount of tightness. And I'm going to be putting it on the rail, not on the dust cover. Uh, there's just a little bit of wiggle on the dust cover that I've noticed. And when I had a red dot on there previously, I did lose zero um, by about like a foot and a half at 200 yards, okay? Um, so we're gonna try it up here. Um, I know some guys like it on the dust cover, but whatever, I'm not really into it. Now the cool thing about this is you see uh, the iron sights go right about here, right? So it does not co-witness, but it has a quick release, so that's fine. And um, it raises up just a little bit. So for me, if I were using iron sights, my cheek would be against the stock right here. And then if I'm using the dot, I bring it up just a little bit. So it's in a more natural position where I raise the rifle to my head. I don't have to move my head onto the stock at all, um, which keeps, keeps the stock lower in your shoulder, right? And I don't have to shrug up as much. It's just a little bit more natural of the position. Um, and with uh, night vision getting real popular too, uh, you know, Everyone wanted full co-witness where your iron sights would flip up and be in the center of the uh, of the glass, and then they wanted lower one third. But now we're going lower than that. Okay, um, the night vision, um, looking with your two with your night vision through the red dot, uh, people are wanting them a little bit higher. And if you want mounts like that, go check out. Uh, shit, what is it called? I don't remember. Comment it below. <laughs> um, <laughs> damn, I really want to remember that right now, but I just don't. But anyways, so that's the um, the Hollow Sun 515 CM, the solar power one. Again, if you want the the HS 515 GM, I think that one's totally fine. Um, but if you're gonna buy one, and you wanted like a good one, a good Hollow Sun for your rifle. I think that's the one to get. We're gonna shoot a bunch. Uh, we'll see how well it maintains zero. Uh, we'll try taking the optic off and putting it back on, seeing if it keeps zero. Um, Cause that's important with the quick release mount. If we find that it, you can't just do that, you know, you'll know about it. Um, and that's it. So this is on the AK, which is a rental gun. So if you want to try it out, just go ahead and sign up for Rifleman One and select um, with rental gun, AK-47, and you can use this gun with this optic and also through a power jack on there. We'll talk about that later. Um, but yeah, you can use that in class if you'd like. Rentals are free, I don't charge for that. Uh, but you gotta bring your own ammo. All right, that's it guys. Thank you for watching. All right, again, if you wanna buy that optic, it's in the description. Uh, I appreciate your comments. I appreciate all my students, especially everyone who's buying my gear. Uh, thank you guys so much. Keep fighting communism. And remember that training saves lives.